All right, welcome to a way of snuggles. <laughs> it's a way of intimacy, the way of mastery. Tonight, we're going to be um, in the way of the heart. And we're going to be on page 17. And it's called The Master Mastery Arises from Innocence. And it's on page 17, In the Way of the Heart. And as usual, the format in the Way of, in the, uh, way of Mastery class is our cover, paragraph, cover a little of it, and then we'll open it up for questions or discussion for about five minutes or so, and then go further so that we can get a chance to hear as much of it as possible. And also, what, you want, what I would invite you to do is to listen for your sentence or your statement or your phrase. It's like the Course in Miracles teaches that it's not an accident that we're here tonight, that we were actually sent here tonight. And so there's something in the material that everyone in this room needs to hear, whether, whether they know it or not. Because it's not, we're not here by chance, and certainly not a group this large. But I learned a long time ago that if I want to have a large group, be in the tainted room. <laughs> <laughs> Those who've been coming for a while know exactly what, I, what I'm talking about. If I come up here, it's like, and then if I'm down there, and that kind of room is five of us. It's so funny. I love it. I love it. But I actually love the, the feeling of closeness and intimacy that we have up here. So, well, here we go. We don't have to believe it, right? We don't have to accept it, welcome it. Some of it we may find hard to believe and quite startling, but if we use the ideas, we'll see that the ideas uh, work. If we use the ideas, we'll see that the ideas work. So it says, um, in these lessons, we will create a system or a pathway upon which you can walk to deliberately cultivate the quality of awareness and consciousness necessary to stabilize that awareness. So we're creating a system, which is the same as saying we're creating a pathway that we can walk, that we're gonna deliberately cultivate the quality of an awareness of in our consciousness that's actually necessary to stabilize that awareness. So we often have awareness, but it's not stable. So what we're learning how to do is to cultivate a level of consciousness that actually stabilizes the awareness. And it says, so that you can bring that awareness to each and every moment of your experience, including the experiences you're having in your relationships, the experience you're having on your job, the experiences you're having in your body, then, then all of those experiences, we need to have an awareness that will stay stable even in the midst of everything that we're going through right now. And um, when you have a lot of things show up unexpectedly that could tempt you to lose your peace, it's really important to cultivate that awareness. And so what happens is, in classes like this, the, the universe is teaching us the lessons that we need to learn, telling us what we need to learn, telling us how to deal with it, and then we go out into our physical world, which is the lab, and then we create situations and circumstances to see if we can cultivate that awareness that we're reading about and listening to here. So we need our learning the most in situations that seem most upsetting. Mm -hmm. Because in situations that seem most upsetting is when we're <clears throat> most likely to not use it. Mm -hmm. And we do what I call falling back to our default setting. And so if you want to know what level of consciousness you're on, it's how you handle upset. Mm -hmm. not how you handle peaceful things seeming like they go in the way you want them to go. Mm -hmm. So if you study and you meditate and you read and you come to classes and then soon as something happens to you, you react as if you are a victim and you blame everybody else around you, then that's the level of consciousness you're really on even though you think you're somewhere else because you come to a class. Mm -hmm. It's how I react. You know, like today, I had a few things come up that were unexpected and, and a test for me. And so the first thing I did, which is I always do, 
uh, is is run as fast as I can to my iPod that's <laughs> full of all of this that I've recorded all I've I've read the way of mastery in my own voice to myself and recorded it and I've read the Course of Miracles to myself and recorded it and I've read the Course of Love. So I have all of these books in my own voice calling my own name. Like for instance when I listen to it it go, Earl, Earl, you gotta create a system. You gotta create a pathway that you deliberately cultivate the quality of consciousness that keeps you stabilized right now. Do you hear what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? So if you talk to yourself like that, listening to the truth, because what happens when you're upset is that's when the voice of fear and the voice of your ego takes over the strongest and it's the loudest. So if you don't become proactive about giving yourself another way of looking at things when you're upset, then it's just like anything else. If you will work on it when things are going okay, then when things seem like they aren't, you would have developed that muscle and it'll be there for you. You know, it's like when I took karate a long time ago, martial arts, they teach you all these different forms that you do over and over and over again so that if you ever attack, you do it, the defensive moves without thinking about it. Because you practice, and that's, why, that's the way I'm attempting to do with the Course in Miracles and all these things. Get so used to these ideas that the first thing that comes up when I get upset is, okay, that's just your call for love. That's just your call for love. That's your call for love. That's what's going on right now. That's your, you, I want that to be the first thing I say to myself rather than that low down son of a gun. I wish they had done something different. So that's what we're doing here. We're creating a system that will stabilize our awareness so that we can deal with the situations that come up every day. So it says, imagine then being able to experience whatever arises without losing the sense of spaciousness, innocence, and ease that you now experience in just fleeting moments. So what would it be like to experience innocence and ease all the time that you're normally just experiencing in a fleeting moment. Mm -hmm. Next week I'm going to do my class in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a line around the building next week. <laughs> I think I've discovered the secret. I thought it was trying to be a good teacher. It was having a tiny room. <laughs> I could have saved myself Places. years of effort. <laughs> yeah, so that be like, it's a packed class tonight. Right. pack like sardines in there. <laughs> yeah, it was right. It so it says, for instance, how you <laughs> know you the experience when things are going well and you're singing a happy tune and life seems to be moving ahead. It says, imagine that same quality of trust, faith, and certainty of purpose even when the buildings are crumbling around you mm -hmm. and your bank account's going dry. Mm -hmm. Could you still have that quality of trust and faith mm -hmm. and certainty of purpose? Imagine being able to look at those events with the same sense of innocence and the same sense of wonder with which you would look into the eyes of your beloved. Mm -hmm. so, so let's say you could look at an overdrawn bank account with the same level of <laughs> <laughs> but you look at your beloved. Wouldn't that be deep? Mm -hmm. Somebody come in and you breathing all hard and, and they say, what's wrong? what's wrong with you? You all turned on. It's my overdrawn bank account. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally turned on. <laughs> I'm looking at it with the eyes like I'm looking at my beloved. How much do that over there? Wow. Wow. Let's, let me just be with that for a second. Mm -hmm. It says, for such a quality of awareness, that's perfect mastery. Mm -hmm. So perfect mastery is my being able to maintain a quality of trust and faith and certainty of purpose when things don't look like they're going the way that I want them to go. Mm -hmm. Because many people on the spiritual path are trying to cultivate the manifestation of their fantasies and their dreams, mm -hmm. and then they feel like if those fantasies and dreams manifest, then I'll be happy. They're not trying to cultivate if nothing goes the way I think I want it to go and I'm still happy. Mm -hmm. And that's mastery. Mm -hmm. I have a good friend of mine who I think is a genius businessman and I, I remember him telling me one time that he, whenever he does, he's enormously successful. And he says, well, his, his secret besides realizing, he always telling himself he's the holy son of God himself because he's a core student. And you know, if, if you find one thought of truth that you will work, until it becomes a part of you, it's awesome. And so you don't have to remember a lot, you just have to remember one of them and use it all the time. And so he was saying he always sets up any type of a business deal where 
if it failed, he would still profit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if it worked, he would profit. So mm -hmm. he would always set it up that if the worst that could happen happened, he would still be okay. Mm -hmm. Right? So, so in other words, just like what it's saying here, he would still be able to ha give himself a sense of joy no matter what appeared <coughs> to be happening. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't it be great if a relationship changed and you would feel that way? And if it looked like you got laid off from your job, you would feel like you had trust and faith and certainty of purpose and were looking at it with innocence. Um, he says that's mas mastery. And within it are discovered perfect peace, perfect freedom, perfect joy, and uninterrupted communion mm -hmm. with all of creation. And if you would well receive it, that quality of feeling intimately one with all of creation is what you have been seeking as a soul since first the identification with the creation called the ego began. So what I'm really searching for, what I'm really seeking is a quality of feeling intimately one with all of you. That's what I really want. And all the experiences and all the things I ask for in the world, I'm hoping <clears throat> will bring me the experience of intimate oneness <clears throat> and perfect freedom and joy. So it's telling us that all the things that we think that we, that we want, we're asking for those things because there's an experience that we want. So if I have a relationship, it's supposed to give me the experience of maybe intimacy and security. If I have a job, it should be giving me the experience of security. You see, so everything we ask for physically is just symbolic of an experience that we want mm -hmm. to have. And the particular thing we ask for is the thing that we think is going to bring us the experience. Everybody with me on that? Mm -hmm. So as you wake up spiritually, you just go directly to asking for the experience. Mm -hmm. So you say, I ask for the experience of abundance, the experience of freedom, the experience of love, the experience of joy, and then let the experience that you request create the form that it would come to you best in. You know, if I, if I want a relationship, it would be better to ask for a loving relationship or, or the experience of loving intimacy and then let the love create the person, the form that it would be best for me to experience it through. And it's not going to be like someone that love sends you is going to be someone you don't want. Right. You know, I asked love to send it to me, but wow, I, you know, she's kind of ugly. So, <laughs> even though spiritual people pretend that appearance doesn't matter, okay, <laughs> but but we all have preferences, right? Yeah. Yes. But <laughs> yeah. so the love. So my point in saying that is that there's no such thing as God or love of the universe sending you something and it not being the form that you would be open and receptive and loving to. That's my point. So, so now, so, so it would be more important to start asking for the content as opposed to the form. Because if you'll be honest with yourself, that's probably where you fail the most. Mm -hmm. It's you choosing the form and then trying to make the form conform to the content that you're looking for. Ooh. Okay? That's the error that the average person makes. I decide I like you, and then whether you like me or not, I'm going to make you like me. Because I like your form. Mm -hmm. I'm attracted to your form. So, he says, for that creation created conflict and separation, everything you've ever attempted to do since has been an attempt to overcome separation and to gain back what you felt you've lost. It's just that the ways you sought to do it don't work. Okay, so the, the, core, so the, so the way of Master just said to us that you know, losing sight of who we are has caused conflict and separation. And ever since we had felt the separation from intimacy and love, we've been trying to get that feeling back, that awareness back. But he says we've been going about it the wrong way. So we want to feel that intimacy again, but we're going about it the wrong way. He says the world of conflict, fear, guilt, and unworthiness, and the world of the kingdom lies side by side within your own mind. Ooh, ooh. Mm -hmm. Let's say that again. Mm -hmm. I think it just pointed out where the world of conflict, fear, and guilt, and unworthiness is. It's in my own mind 
side by right next to all the joy and the love that I want to experience. Mm -hmm. So if you could imagine that this is your mind, then the fear is on one side and the love is on the other side, but it's still in your mind. So I got one half of my mind that projects fear and conflict. I got another part of my mind that projects, projects love. If I side with the part of my mind that projects fear and conflict, that's the world I see. If I side with the part of my mind that's totally and completely seeing the love and the innocence, that's the world I see. Mm. If I'm not consistent with siding with the love, then I go like this. Love, fear, love, fear, 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 love, fear, conflict, 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 <coughs> peace, peace, conflict, conflict, peace, conflict, peace, conflict. Then you come home and fall out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. The reason why we see both all day is because we are inconsistent in the part of our mind that we side with all day. Everybody with me still. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what you call a bad day is just a day you're totally inconsistent with what side of your mind you side with. Mm. 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 So it says the eye of the needle that one must pass through is the re-cultivation of the innocence of a child. It is for this reason that I often talk begin again as a little child to enter the kingdom. So when it says be as a little child, the way a master is saying, it's just saying recultivate the innocence of a child. Recultivate that sense of innocence if you really want to be happy. So we gotta now that's that's interesting too if you think about it, because one of the things that the fearful part of the world man in us does constantly is try to make us feel guilty. We use guilt all the time as a way to manipulate others and to manipulate ourselves. I feel guilty about this, I feel guilty about that, I feel guilty about the other, or you're guilty, right? So that's just the opposite of cultivating the innocence of a child, so therefore we get just the opposite of the joy that we say we want. So who would be my greatest enemy? My greatest enemy within myself would be my thoughts of guilt. My greatest enemy in the world would be someone that's constantly trying to make me feel guilty at my request. Mm -hmm. So whoever's trying to make me feel guilty all the time, that's, what, that's the part of my mind I need to be aware of the most because that's the person that's helping to reinforce the idea that I deserve to be punished. And then since my thoughts create my reality, I create suffering for myself from my world. And that's where suffering comes from. It comes from unconscious projected guilt coming back at you. You're about to deal with me. <laughs> All right, okay. Like I said, it's getting really, really quiet. What I call the, you can hear a gnat fart level. <laughs> okay, that's, that's, that's that pretty that powerful was? stuff. Yeah, that's what that, you, you heard it over there right in the corner, right next to the heart. Right, 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 I know, right? right that's right, right, right there. Okay, now, before I go further, okay, so let's take a few minutes, uh, about five minutes, to any comments, questions, discussion, so did you have a time, a chance, an opportunity to, to get feedback or just to discuss what we just heard? What was would anybody care to share what what statement was has been most impactful to them that they've heard so far? Mm. Or any question you want to ask? Yeah, Lord. The part about the form and mm -hmm. the content. So if you say you're meeting someone and you know going to form a relationship then the form would be all the things that you decided that you wanted in that relationship and 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 that well, that would be the con that would be that would be well that would be the content that would be the content yeah the content would be what you were doing it for mm -hmm. what do you want it for like the course of miracles says that you would always ask yourself in any situation, but especially a relationship, what is the purpose? What is it for? That's why I've always joked right. with people and say, mm -hmm. if a guy comes up and asks you for your phone number, uh, say <coughs> what for? <laughs> <laughs> and if they're doing a whole lot of stuttering, it's something they really don't want to tell you. <laughs> Unless they're quick to say for the uh, realization of my spiritual identity. Oh, right. 
<laughs> so uh, the like form, the, fo form. the form would be all uh -huh. the, the appearances and all the outer characteristics. The so the part. yeah, the, the car oh, they drive, the, the the what they physically look like, you know, the appearance. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's the mm -hmm. form. That's the form. You know, like I, I knew a guy that wouldn't date anybody that wasn't blonde with blue eyes. Mm -hmm. It didn't make any difference how nice the woman he met was. Mm -hmm. If she was a brunette, she was doomed. Mm -hmm. it, it, it because blonde and blonde and yeah. <laughs> yeah. She was lucky. Yeah. 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 But, but, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 The, the form, okay, I won't date a guy who doesn't make $100,000 a year. That's form. Mm -hmm. That's form. That's yeah. physical form. Money. Mm -hmm. uh, the content would be what would that person's purpose be? What would the, how do they look at reality? What are their beliefs? Mm -hmm. That's the content. Are they coming from love? Are they coming from mm -hmm. fear? Would this be someone who reinforces my innocence, or would this be someone to reinforce my guilt? Because because the more you love a person, the better they look to you anyway. Mm -hmm. So if you really love someone, mm -hmm. they they couldn't be ugly. Mm -hmm. Have you ever loved someone and you thought they looked physically great, and then well, I put it this way. Uh, thought you loved someone and they looked physically great and then for whatever reason you got mm -hmm. upset and y'all had a big fight or you broke up and all of a sudden you <laughs> ask yourself how was I ever with them in the first place <laughs> what happened <laughs> yeah, why didn't I put a bag over that head <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. yeah because why you, when you change your mind and you looking through fear mm -hmm. people look different than they look when you're looking through love mm -hmm. and the more you feel love for them the more beautiful they become and that's why you can see people in their 90s walking down the street holding hands yeah. because to each other they still love each other and see each other the way they did when maybe they were 40 years younger mm -hmm. but if it's a relationship based on form then that person is ready to get rid of you when your body changed. Mm -hmm. Because it never was based on who you were. It was based on their fantasy. Yeah. So, in my head, I do this a lot. I go back from like the fear to the love, and when I'm like seeing the world fearfully, I'll think about like my job and how I need to work harder and advance and get a car and my own face and all these things that become just things, you know? Mm -hmm. And then when I'm not looking that way, it's just kind of this, I don't know <coughs> any of it, it's just the really the experience of just being all of myself all the time, you know? Mm -hmm. which, which is just what so, we just got through. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like yeah. Especially it, like in my relationship, I mm -hmm. know it's like, we're like, okay, so. Just like I'll put a a label on, like a or like an idea to the experience. That's I'm, my mind is blown because mm -hmm. now I see what I do all the time, mm -hmm. and now I can I can diagram what's going on inside myself. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the first step in awakening <laughs> is recognizing that the song you're singing to yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it, the, the, that's the first step. Is that is that I get a chance to kind of step back and I see what I'm telling myself and I see mm -hmm. what I'm making myself feel. And it's and it's also important to realize that if you're feeling less than peaceful, don't judge yourself for that. Still let yourself yeah. feel what you feel. Don't pretend you don't <clears throat> feel what you feel. Just tell yourself the truth about it as soon as you possibly can. That's the main thing because sometimes people for the sake of trying to be positive, repress what they really feel. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, then it comes back to you through the events and the people that come into your life. That, um, right. So I'm in a situation right now where I asked for the content um, constantly, like, with my higher power. And, um, and I got that, and it came in two, <laughs> both with the content that I wanted. I have to make a decision now. Mm -hmm. And do I, is it kind of just continuing to kind of listen to the higher power? And, um, and well, always listen to the higher power, but also recognize that in the world, the, in the perception of ourselves in the world, there's really no such thing as 
two things having equal attraction. Uh -huh. So even though it looked like both things came to you <laughs> and the content seems similar, if you step back off of it, you really look at look at it as a whole and ask the Holy Spirit or higher self the, the correct way to look at it, you'll see that there's something about one of them that's more appealing than the other one. It, it, it could be something very simple, but there's something about one that would be easier for you to flow with okay. than the other one. Okay. And, and, and another thing you could do is think about, if it's a person, mm -hmm. think about them and, uh, and think about the other person and then see if when you think about one of them, you feel a little bit lighter than when you think about the other one. Mm -hmm. That would be one way. And also, though, and this is <coughs> kind of deep, but <coughs> uh, if all I wanted was the truth, everybody would be equally uh -huh. acceptable. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so the mm -hmm. mere fact that I'm choosing one person mm -hmm. over another person for any reason means that there's some level of my fantasy involved and there's something I want them for beyond the truth. Mm. Amen. Mm. Okay, you're about, you hear what I'm saying? That doesn't mean you're guilty, doesn't mean you're bad. It's okay to have a preference. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that's not okay because if you if you have a preference, then you're much more likely to enjoy mm -hmm. and to share love with whoever or whatever that is. But, that's, but just, let's just say, I, all I wanted to do was remember who I really am mm -hmm. and get the blocks to love removed from me mm -hmm. and to know my relationship with my higher power. Well, every single person in the room mm -hmm. could be a means for mm -hmm. me to learn how mm -hmm. to do that. But if I want somebody who skis, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? This isn't a dating thing. No, no, no I'm, I'm just using this example, right. right? If I want someone who skis, then at that point, then I'm going to pick and choose mm -hmm. one person over the other person. And spirit will still use whichever one I use because we're in a thought system that there is no loss. So there's, so there's actually nothing we can choose that our higher power can't use to wake mm -hmm. us up. So you, so that's don't worry about that. Like people fret too much about, am I going to make a mistake in this choice? Well. You know, the spirit works just like a GPS does. When you make a wrong turn, it just reroutes, reroutes you from exactly where you are. It doesn't say go back to where you made the wrong turn. It just starts to tell you the right way from where you are. Mm -hmm. So if you make a wrong turn with a person or a situation or a circumstance, then your higher power will start right mm -hmm. there to correct you and bring you back into alignment. So that's the, that's the hardest part about the these, these spiritual path is that it's not hard. <laughs> it, it's that it's, it, it's that it's very different, but it's not hard, and we mistake difference being hard, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. and and the reason that's so is because whatever our self concept is, whenever you learn, then it changes that, and there's nothing that we're more attached to than our self image, mm -hmm. and so that's why we resist change. Because it's affecting the way we see ourselves. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so learning means change. So if I say I'm ready to learn, then I have to lose my attachment to mm -hmm. my concept of myself. Right. But that's who I think I am. <laughs> so therefore, I'm going to resist it. If I say something to you that's contrary to your concept of yourself, then that's when people <coughs> react. You know, if you see yourself as smart, and I tell you you just did something dumb, then you're going, what do you mean? Why? Because I'm a smart person. See, that's my, my concept of myself got affected by that. So, so what, what this is telling us is that what we want to do is start to develop a concept of ourselves that's more in, li in alignment with who we really are as love. And then it would be easier to get into the awareness of who we really are as love. So, um, okay. Uh, anybody else before I go to... I had my part. hand up for a long time. I want oh, to know that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. What, 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 what's up, then, Ms. Hart? So, you know, I when it came to relationships, I tended to like have the same relationship only at a different face. Mm hmm. And the last one after I crashed and burned, and you know I fell into you <laughs> mm -hmm. um, when I came to you. And I made the decision this year that I'm going to get past whatever this was, you know, that the pattern mm -hmm. of attracting in 
what I didn't want. Mm -hmm. And really got clear with myself, dating myself, and just really being in the space this year. And as I'm getting ready to step back into the dating arena, <laughs> I'm finding that I don't trust my picker. <laughs> Good. And any guidance <laughs> on that, because it's like, all right, I've done a lot of work this year. I've, I've really delved into the Courts and Miracles. You know, I mean, all of my spiritual practice that I've done, I've done a lot of work and really feel good and comfortable in myself. I've shifted. Mm -hmm. So just looking for some, you know, what would the Course have to say? What would the Way of Mastery have to say about... It would still go back to that. that well, problem. first of all, it would, it would still go back to, to... I'm always asking my higher power, the Holy Spirit, to decide for me in anything that I'm asking for. That's that's number one. Mm -hmm. Because I know if I single anybody out, it's my ego anyway. Mm -hmm. So I already need rerouting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Okay>. Recalculating. <laughs> just recalculating just because I pick you. <laughs> okay, yeah. everybody clear about that. Especially if you've got a track record of picking people that you just <laughs> had to pick. you got to, you know, you got to pull a picker. <laughs> and then if you really get smart, you go, I'm attracted to him, I'm going to go the other way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm attracted to them, so therefore I need to get clear what it's a purpose, what it's yeah. for, what do I want out of this, you know. And, and I want to ask myself if we have a common purpose, if we really communicate. Mm -hmm. So what I would do is I would have a conversation first. Mm -hmm. You know, I would really want to find out how that person thought, what they believe. Which, in other words, you would you would get with that person if possible and be um, interested instead of trying to be interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, if you mm -hmm. if you meet someone and, and you mm -hmm. hang out with them a whole evening and they've never asked you three questions about yourself, then that's everything you need to know about them mm -hmm. on the very first date. If it's all about them impressing you with their accomplishments and who they are, and then you pay attention to how they deal with the server and how they talk about the person that they were just in a relationship. You listen, you know, it's like that's the, that's the main, and then realize that it's okay if you pick wrong again. And that's the reason, because remember, it was saying that what we are cultivating is a state of mind where we have peace no matter what. Mm -hmm. So you can't pick wrong. So you really can't pick wrong mm -hmm. if right. you, if, if you can't pick wrong if you want to use them for the right thing. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? If I if I really want to use you as a tool for awakening and an opportunity to give and receive love, then how could I pick wrong? Mm. If I want to give, you know what I'm saying? So it, it so I'm picking wrong only in terms of my fantasies anyway, mm. and the needs that I think I want this person to meet anyway. But suppose I'm whole and complete, and I don't have any needs, and I'm just there to give and receive love. Well, no one could be the wrong person. Because there's no script I'm trying to get them to act out that they can disappoint yeah. me about. Mm -hmm. yeah. right? right? So then I'm showing up moment to moment to, to see what we create together, which would make the relationship really exciting. Because now I'm with you as a means of self-realization for both of us. we both excited to see when the rabbit's going to pop out of the hat. Mm -hmm. Rather than, I have a fantasy that I want you to act out, mm -hmm. and I actually want you to get out of the relationship so I can have my fantasy and uninterrupted mm -hmm. bliss. Mm -hmm. So I really don't want to hear your desires. I don't want to hear what you want. It's really about what I want to fulfill my needs, and that's the average person looking for a relationship. They're just looking to get a fantasy fulfilled, and they just want to fit everybody into that particular fantasy, and they don't even know who the person really is. But, but if we were to bring this back to what this is talking about, then it would the message would be, even if I make a wrong choice, I think, with my picker, can I cultivate the innocence of a child and look at what I looked at as the mistake with joy and innocence and wonder? Wow, I did it again. <laughs> wow, boy, that was a good one. See, it would be more like that then, oh my God, I just never do relationships mm -hmm. right, so therefore I'm never going to give myself another one unless I'm absolutely sure this is the perfect person. See, that's the mm -hmm. wrong attitude. That's what I came here to hear. Thank you. Oh, uh, you're very... <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can leave that. <laughs> it's just think, and just think about if you took that attitude about everything, the difference it would make. Mm -hmm. Think about how many people that don't start their own business or don't dare to follow their heart. Or don't, because they're so freaking afraid that they're going to make a mistake. Right. 
that it's not going to turn out. You know what I'm saying? I remember when I first decided I was I wanted to do the Course in Miracles full time, 27 years ago now. You know, if, if I did a class and no one showed up, I still did the class. Even if I thought I was doing it for myself. Even though my ego could say, well, this isn't going to work. You'll never be able to do that. You know, it's the same thing. Whether someone came or not, I did what I would do if they came. And that's what you do. That's what you do. Um, and so, okay, let's go on further now. That's good. That's good. Thank you for, for, for being willing to share. Um, so uh, what I try to do when you ask me a question is I try not to give you Earl's wisdom, but really take advantage of the fact that I've studied this so much and try to relay what it is suggesting that you do. Because I'm, I'm, I'm just as much of a learner of this as you are, uh, maybe more. I'm the one that needs 30 people in front of me to get it. Okay, so the, cultivated, the cultivation of the way of the heart is that pathway whereby you deliberately and consciously choose to become again as innocent, as an innocent, as an innocent, as an innocent child. Just as you were in the beginning before you ever created and then incarnated into this dimension of experience that seems to be so perme permeated by a sense of conflict and separation. So before you ever came here, you had the innocence of a child. So this, is, this, this teaching is suggesting that you existed before you were born and you will continue to exist after you were born, after you so-called die. Okay, that's what we're being told, that we are incarnate, but who we are is innocent, and we can't lose that innocence because we're temporarily dipped into physical form. That's what it was, a little dip. Like you dive into a pool, we dive into the physical. And you don't feel guilty about diving into a pool unless it's somebody else's and you're not supposed to be in the yard. But, you know, <laughs> but basically, you feel pretty good about diving in the pool. So we should feel good about diving into the physical pool instead of making up, you know, stuff like guilt and sin, which makes the, 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 the swim not too comfortable. So cold. Yeah. The pool so cold. The pool to cold. <laughs> the cold pool. So this is great. Then it says... What's the next section? What you decree is. Mm. What you decree is. So I would ask you now to begin to put this into practice. Wherever you happen to be, are you here? Mm -hmm. Stop for just a moment and truly become aware of where you are. Okay, mm -hmm. let's stop a moment and just, just become aware of where you are and, and what's happening around you and who's around you. Because what happens is we'll come to something like this where we're surrounded by people. We <laughs> handle that so well. Yes. Am I, is my head not cut off? Is it okay? Okay. Good. Okay. Yes. I have an app for that. <laughs> 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 that will join all these little pieces together into one class. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have an app, period. That now, there's an Earl Purdy app that you can download what? to what? put on your smartphone and tablet too. <laughs> so, um, so I'll be sending out more information about that. So there's an app for me. Okay. Yeah, an Earl app. That's cool. Okay. <laughs> so I must have been really getting ready to say something. Okay, that's where we were. The minute I said we should become aware of each other. Yes. <laughs> Bam. Bam. <laughs> None of that. None of that. Okay. So the question is, where are you? Are you having the experience of seemingly being within a body? Uh, do you not seem to be abiding in a room somewhere? Are you not within an environment in which there are certain weather patterns going on around you? Mm-hmm. Perhaps there are sounds coming into your ears. Mm -hmm. Can you truly be aware of where you are right now? In other words, are you sitting here thinking about what you're going to do later? Or what happened before you got here? Right? Mm -hmm. Are you truly aware of where you are now? Can you feel the weight of your body as you sit upon, stand upon your feet or sit within your chair? Are you mm -hmm. feeling the weight of your body? Do you notice the tension in the neck? Notice this didn't say, do you notice the tension in your neck? 
It said, <laughs> do you notice the tension in the neck? And then it didn't say, can you feel the weight? It said, can you feel the weight of the body <laughs> as you sit within the chair? It didn't say, can you feel the weight of your body? So it, what's happening is that it's very subtly uh, showing us that the body and you are not the same thing. It's the body, not your body, which is kind of deep. Now, the part of us that identifies with the body really doesn't like that. <coughs> the minute you say anything about you not being your body, then the ego gets really upset about that. It thinks that it's saying there's something wrong with the body, or <coughs> you should not enjoy the body, or you should not... Ex it just said, are you feeling the body? Did you notice the tension in the neck? Do you notice the racing of the mind if that's going on? Can you begin to bring awareness to exactly what is? Can you bring awareness to what is? What is is there are bodies in a room listening to sounds that are coming out of the body that's sitting in front of it. And everything else is a story. Everything else. So can you learn how to start reporting as opposed to judging? Mm. Reporting is, I'm sitting here, you're sitting there, it's a pretty, it's, it's whatever degree it is, whatever time it is, and then everything else is your story. And that's what we do all day long. We take what is, and then we project our story mm -hmm. on it. So it says, can you become, can you begin to bring awareness to exactly what is from a place of innocence and non-judgment? You have a saying in your world, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. That is the beginning of wisdom. What is your relationship? Well, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, what is this class? Well, it is what it is. So what is, you will discover that what is, is what you have chosen to make of it. That's what it is for you. <laughs> Is what this this time together is what you are making of it, mm. and as a teacher and student myself, it, it it allows me to teach without getting caught up so much in how people are reacting to what I'm saying or doing because everybody's going to see it however they want to see it no matter what I do. Some people are going to go to sleep immediately. Some people are going to be hanging on every word, you know, and that's just because that's just what they're choosing to make it for themselves. I don't have anything to do with that. Mm -hmm. But I used to feel like, oh, it's my responsibility to make sure everyone stays awake and they stay conscious and they, nope, my responsibility is to keep awake and keep conscious myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's my responsibility. You are responsible for your awakeness and consciousness. Mm -hmm. And you will always be awake mm -hmm. and conscious about what you value. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what you don't, you have a hard time staying conscious mm -hmm. about. Or it's applying to you so truly that your ego does not want you to hear it. Mm -hmm. So it just takes you into unconsciousness so that you won't hear the answer to your own misery. Because the time of your suffering that you've decided to go through, the sentence that you've given yourself, that time isn't up yet. So if I've sentenced myself to six months of suffering because of <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I just happen not to have it down here with me. I got it up in my office, but I don't feel like going there. And I'm going to take this as a living opportunity to see if I can uh -huh. stay in a state of innocence no matter what. Uh -huh. I, I use it as a living choice. So... Now, it says, now what is, is what you have chosen to make of it, but therefore, be therefore where you are now and deliberately decide, deliberately decide, deliberately decide, deliberately decide to accept wholly that what you are experiencing in this very moment, what you are experiencing in this very moment has no cause whatsoever except your choice to experience it. Mm -hmm. Everything that's happening in this moment for you is being caused by your choice to experience it. Mm -hmm. You are here because it was your choice to experience mm -hmm. it. So rest assured, whatever the mind may try to say, if you did not 
totally or wholly want to be right where you are, you wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. And that's true in every single area of your life. Mm -hmm. You're in that relationship because you are totally wanting to be there. Mm -hmm. You're on that job because you're totally wanting to be there. Your financial situation is a totally what you want it to be. Everything about your experience is happening because that's what you totally want to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, 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 oh. Hell no! <laughs> 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 no, I know I didn't choose that. There ain't no way you can convince me that I chose that. And that's how you keep it in place. Mm -hmm. That's exactly how you keep it going. Like people, well, why is it? Why am I having this problem and it's just happening over and over again? You're not taking responsibility over and over again. You you acting like it's something happening that you're not choosing, Raj. Mm -hmm. You know, <clears throat> you know, it, it's like the, the higher power, the Holy Spirit, just has one answer to me. No matter what I say, you're doing it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but you're doing it to yourself. You're doing it to yourself. So I just made a recording of me saying that over and over. Again. You're doing it to yourself. You're doing it to yourself. You're doing it to yourself. You are doing it to yourself. You are doing it to yourself. You are doing it to yourself. You you are doing this to yourself. Over and over and over and over and over again until I get some sense of relief. <laughs> because then I know I'm breaking the pattern. Mm -hmm. And then if I want to suffer, I got another tape that goes, no good son of a gun, <laughs> they're to the blame. It's their fault. It's their fault. It's their fault. It's their fault, Raj. It's their fault. That, that's when I want to suffer. <laughs> okay? <Yeah. laughs> and sometimes I want to suffer. So I do my, it's their fault tape. <laughs> It's just that simple. That's why it's so hard because the ego needs complicated solutions and answers because the ego is the part of the mind that believes in complexity. Because if you can make it complex, you got the best excuse in the world not mm -hmm. to change oh. and not to do anything about it. Just make it complex. Mm -hmm. I'm a complex person. This is a very complicated situation. <laughs> what are you talking about, dude? This, com this is complicated. You know. So then that's my excuse not to do anything about it. It's complicated. Right? So if you were to say, whatever's happening in my life right now, what's ever going on in my life right now, I chose it, I am choosing it, and I do not perceive my own best interest in this situation, and everything that's happening is for my own best interest, you would get some relief. <clears throat> because it's almost impossible not to feel some level of relief if you felt like whatever you were experiencing was somehow benefiting you in some way. So if you can go, it sounds kind of paradoxical to put it this way, but you go, I do not perceive my own best interests. And everything is for my own best interests. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And I chose this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you'll see it begin mm -hmm. to shift. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now how can I tell if I'm blaming and not mm -hmm. taking responsibility? by how much conflict, upset, guilt, anger, sadness, depression that I'm feeling. I'm feeling that in direct proportion to which I'm not empowering myself by seeing myself as not being the victim of the situation. Mm. Got it? Yeah. So why do people keep doing that even though you tell them that this is the way out? You know why. Because I've just shared it. Yeah. Why? Must be what they want. They want, they want to suffer. They, they want to suffer. Well, they don't know any other way. And they don't know any other way. So if, you, if, if there's a payoff, and your payoff is your suffering, and out of your suffering you're going to be okay, because we were taught if you're punished you're okay, <clears throat> then you are going to not take the advice or the teachings from spirit that would get you out of the suffering. That's why at some point on the spiritual path you let people be exactly where they are because you realize they are staying there because they want to. Mm -hmm. so, so in other words, if we walk out of this class tonight and we go right back to projection and blame and sadness, then you're deliberately choosing to continue to suffer. You can no longer say there's not a way out of your suffering. <laughs> That's why you know, many people don't want to get to the truth because then you no longer have an excuse for your suffering. 
right. And mm -hmm. so I don't have to be like feeling all bad and sad because of your suffering if you have a choice and you're choosing not to use it. Mm. So, but you know what's really the good news? Is that it teaches that there is a limit to suffering. There is no limit to love, but there is a limit to pain. And there is a limit to suffering. Isn't that great? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's great to know that you will reach your limit one day. Even if right now you haven't reached it, so there's no part of you that wants to consistently focus on the truth in any kind of way, or you're doing the really powerful ego thing of thinking you already know, <laughs> but you're still not happy. Yeah. So then the man goes, well, I've heard that before. There's nothing new in what he's saying, but your ass is still suffering. <laughs> <laughs> so you really don't know what I'm saying at all. Yes. And you're really not applying what you're hearing at all. <laughs> How do I know that? Because my ass is still suffering. <laughs> I wish it would be much, much more of a mystery than that. But if I'm suffering, I'm still not applying the truth. When I apply the truth, I will stop suffering. Mm -hmm. And if I'm suffering, I'm not. Mm -hmm. If I'm applying it, I'm not suffering. If I'm not applying it, I'm suffering. End of mystery as to whether or not I'm applying the truth. Mm -hmm. But I am applying it. No, you're thinking about applying it. You are analyzing applying it. You're repeating to yourself like an affirmation, which can be helpful. But are you living it? No. How do I know? I'm suffering. Mm. I'm hurting. I'm angry. I'm bored. I'm unfulfilled. <clears throat> well, I'm not applying it. So I'm innocent. I should look at it with wonder, with joy, and the innocence of a child. Okay. Mm. I'm still not doing it yet. I'm not taking responsibility for my experience yet. Okay. That's, so I'm, there's nobody to blame. There's nobody to forgive. I can just, okay, I just admit this right now. I just want to talk. Just leave me alone. <laughs> and, and, and you will be have more peace if you say that than uh -huh. saying, oh, well, I, I'm suffering, but I really don't want to suffer. I'm sad, but I really don't want to suffer. I'm bored and I'm lonely, but I really don't want to be. It'd be better to go, I'm bored and I'm lonely and I want to be. <laughs> and you and you just do that as a child. We've all done that. Just leave me alone. Yeah. I want to be mad right now. Yep. That's more honest than to walk around come, saying that you're doing it great <coughs> and yet nothing's going right for you. Because what that does is it makes you believe that your thoughts have no power. Yeah. It takes your power away. Mm -hmm. It would be better for me to say my life is screwed up because I'm making screwed up decisions mm -hmm. than for me to say I'm doing everything right and everything's turning out wrong. Mm -hmm. See, it, so it actually doesn't feel good and right at first, baby, to admit you're the one that's responsible for the relationship that you're having that's not satisfying you. But if you say it that way, you're giving yourself the power. And so one day you'll go, I reached my limit. I'm not going to compromise anymore. This is what I really am going to do. And when you really reach your limit, you won't care what anybody else thinks about it. Because <coughs> you know it's best for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like if it was arsenic up here and I said, there's arsenic, and everybody in the room started take, eating it, uh, I don't care how many of you all ate it, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> so just because everybody else is doing it that doesn't mean you're supposed to join mm -hmm. in just because something is untrue is a popular thought <laughs> that doesn't mean you keep doing it too and that's mm -hmm. what people do just go along with the herd mm -hmm. okay this is the way special relationships has all, have always been done so mm -hmm. I'm going to do it that way too and get it different you know mm -hmm. it's like no at some point you go nope like you say being it says being it says if you are in a body in the field of space and time, rest assured, you desired it, you chose it, and now that body is here. So I'm in a body right now because I desire to be in the body, I chose to be in the body, and I'm here in the body. That's why you're in the body. You are not born because your parents had sex, you decided to be born, your parents had sex, and you came through it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, 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 you came later. <laughs> you, came, you came later. <laughs> they came. That's why you're here. <laughs> 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 Say what? 
<laughs> yeah, there, there's a little bit of both of them going ah, on. Yes, yeah. that's right. That's right. So, what is, <laughs> so a lot of a, a lot you can't prove this is true, but there are a lot of metaphysical and spiritual teachings that that yeah. say include this that you know you chose your parents, you chose your race, you chose your sex, mm -hmm. you chose the general situations and circumstances that you were born into. That none of that was thrust upon you. Mm -hmm. You chose it. That all of our relationships, especially the relationships with our parents and intimate people, mm -hmm. are soul contracts mm -hmm. that we made before we entered the dream of our evolutionary enlightenment Ooh. and development. So all those people that you are trying to forgive are people that you actually agree with that you would go through the experience that you went through mm -hmm. with them so that you could cultivate certain levels of consciousness. Mm -hmm. So so if I, so no matter what happened to me in my childhood, it was all part of a contract. It was all part of an agreement. You know, I, I chose to be in a black body. It was not something that was thrust upon me. I chose to be born in the segregated South because I needed to deal with my own racism. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I was not racist, I wouldn't have experienced racism. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, it, so as long as I project that I'm not the racist, then I could never get rid of my racism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why racism is still in the dream mm -hmm. that we're having because nobody's a racist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you notice that? Yeah. Almost anybody you talk to, I'm not, I'm not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't move next door, please. <laughs> <laughs> These property values in Denver are going up. Don't you blow it for me. <laughs> but I'm not racist. <laughs> <laughs> Probably be a yeah. different story if everybody that was coming over the border was from England. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. As opposed to a third world country. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. it might have a little bit to do with the color of the immigrants. <laughs> <laughs> of course not, because what? We're not racist. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Yeah. No Irish need apply. <laughs> oh, you better believe that would the immigration law would have been passed by now. Yeah. It better have been all Irish. Oh yeah. yeah. So be quiet, because we innately are more comfortable with those who appear to be the most like us. Mm -hmm. That's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. It was funny. You know, I, I all my friends come in all kinds of colors and sizes, right? Mm -hmm. So when I was in Memphis, you know, because usually I'm the only black person in most things that I go to. And so therefore everybody's just, oh, you know, I don't have any problem with racism. I didn't, it doesn't bother me at all. You know, Earl, I couldn't understand if you even thought about that. You even, you know, you, you've been mad. I, 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 I love you all. Please don't lose your sense of humor. Please. Please, please, don't, please don't start judging what people say and how don't they say it. Yeah. Let's have, let's have a good time in my class. Please don't, don't, try, don't try to make it to a regular spiritual class. It would just be too boring. I couldn't take it. Okay. It's just us. It's just, it's just, it's just us. You know what I mean? That's why that's, I know, I'm just me. And this is just us. <laughs> we don't, we're not here to act out a script for how right. a spiritual class mm -hmm. should be and how it should look mm -hmm. and how it people should speak. And I'm not here to act out any kind of role about how a spiritual teacher should be or how he should act mm -hmm. because that wouldn't be living the truth. That wouldn't be authentic. And people can feel it when you're just acting out mm -hmm. a role mm -hmm. as opposed to showing up as who you really are. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like it's no accident that we all look different. Mm -hmm even though we're not. It's so that we can bring our own unique expression of the love of God into this experience. I don't want you to be like me. I want you. To, I want to see who you show up as mm. instead of trying to get you to act the way I want you to act. Mm -hmm. And people think if they do that, if they relinquish that illusion of control over how they want somebody else to be, that whatever that need is, that they think that person is going to fulfill through acting out their fantasy, they think it won't be met. Mm. That's why they're trying to control it. But the truth is, if you just be honest with yourself about what your need is, your need will be met. Mm. Mm -hmm. you, you, you will, by someone who naturally expresses themselves that way, and they would be expressing themselves that way even if they never saw you. Mm -hmm. 
you know what I'm saying? They say you got a thing about red. Like it's got to be red. If it's red, then you're happy, right? And then you're trying to like stop trying to make everybody be red because you need red even though they're blue and they're green. You're going to turn them into red because red is your need. If you sincerely wanted that and you weren't trying to control someone, someone who was naturally red would show up and they would be red whether they were around you or not. So you're not manipulating and your need is being met. But most people don't have enough trust to let that happen. Because they think it's a, it's not a lot of love out there. So if you're lucky enough to just get one person, then you can just try to hold, hold on to them. Any <laughs> <laughs> way you want. Just tweak them just yes. a little bit and it'll be all right. And then standing over there, is, I'm red. I'm red. I'm here and I'm red. No, I got to have the red over here. I got to make the blue person red. <laughs> it's so slow it's such a slow way to be happy but it's the most popular way out there mm. it really is it really is boy I tell you it's easier than we think it is right so it says begin here there is no need to judge it no need to ask it to be different <laughs> Just truly be aware of what is. If you are feeling the body sitting in the chair, allow this thought to come into your mind. If you're sitting in, anybody, everybody sitting in the chair? Okay, allow this thought to come into your mind. And I'm gonna say it a couple of times. I have literally created this experience. Just think this, you don't have to say it out loud. I have literally created this experience. I have literally created this experience. I have literally, they say literally, you created this experience. Something within me is so grand so powerful, so vast, so beyond anything that scientists ever come up with that I have literally crystallized into the field of experience and awareness of being a body in space and time. You have literally crystallized into experience the awareness of being a body in this space and time. You have literally crystallized into experience an awareness of being a body in space and time. Mm -hmm. With the mind goes, what, is, what does that have to do with me paying my XL utility bill? <laughs> you know, people be wondering stuff like that. What does that have to do with my evaluation at work? I hear you talking, dude, but what does that got to do with the fact that I was just diagnosed with a very serious illness? Mm -hmm. I have literally crystallized mm -hmm. that experience into the field of my experience. Mm. That's what it's telling us. That, that whatever I'm going through right now, I've literally crystallized it into the field of experience so I can also <laughs> make another choice. That's the beauty of knowing that I made my illness is I can allow my health. Or... I could realize I chose it and I might not ever get rid of the illness, but I could learn how to look at it differently and still have peace. Mm -hmm. So the person who's in master may have cancer, but they have peace about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where the person that's unaware would be saying, if you really were doing it right, you wouldn't have cancer. No, if you're really doing it right, you wouldn't have a grievance. You wouldn't have a resentment. You wouldn't have a sense of separation from source. You wouldn't think you were alone in it, and you wouldn't be angry at yourself and condemning yourself for having it. Mm -hmm. That's what a master would do. Yes. Wow. Wow. So your body has come forth from the field of your consciousness. It's the gift to you of God who asks only that you learn to create as God creates. So we're here to learn to create as the creator creates. We are here to extend love. He says, I've said many times that the creator looks upon you and says, this is my only creation and it's very good. You, we are the only creation and it's ve we're very good. We're very good. We're very good. Mm -hmm. I'm not teaching because you're broken. Mm -hmm. I'm not teaching you because I think you're broken. I'm not teaching myself through you because I think I'm broken. I, I'm teaching because I've forgotten. Mm -hmm. I'm teaching because I've forgotten and I forget. And I need to remember. <laughs> if you know how to ride a bicycle and somebody hits you in your head and you get amnesia, mm -hmm. all of a sudden you don't forget you learned how to ride a bike, you hit your head again, you remember you can ride a bike, you get right on it and you ride away. 
So the minute you remember who you really are, you remember your power to create. And in that instant, you'll change your whole world from anything that's causing you any kind of pain to the total joy and bliss of creation in an instant. Because you'll remember you're not a victim of it, so you can choose differently. But we have amnesia right now. And while we were on amnesia, we went to stupid school <laughs> called Earth. <laughs> where they teach us at our request everything that's not true <clears throat> which is that basically we are a victim of everything that happens to us and we don't have a po the power to change it and we are, and we are a victim of, the, of everything that happens to us so we're in amnesia and then while we're in amnesia we're giving ourselves mental abuse mm. <laughs> right and so this book is saying wake up the spiritual paths are saying wake up wake up wake up Okay, we'll use your relationships. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Everything here, we'll use it to wake up. But it's a, well, I'm slapping to emphasize this, but we aren't slapped to learn. So, so every relationship should have the purpose of helping me remember that I'm literally choosing this, that I'm totally innocent, and that I'm not a victim. And everybody in my personal experience, I should be using them for that awareness. And if I'm really blessed, I have people who are intimates with me that consciously know that, and we're consciously together trying to help each other remember, and we also go to the movies. <laughs> <laughs> right, and we also go to parties, and we go on trips. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So there's no sacrifice of what we think of as the physical pleasures of the world. We just try to add some consciousness and some awakening to the process. Mm. That's the, so when you think the truth is asking you to sacrifice the pleasures of the body, the truth teaches that the body doesn't even have any hope of pleasure. That it's not your body that's saying, I want the ice cream. It's your mind saying, I want the ice cream, and then using the body to go to the ice cream store. <laughs> your body could care less whether you ate the ice cream or not, mm. in and of itself, right? So if we walk away today and tonight and we feel like, hey, this, I am a good creation. I am a whole creation. I'm a healed creation. My only challenge is that I've forgotten. It says, for the Father marvels at what you are, knowing perfectly well that what you are emerged from her holy mind. Mm -hmm. So let's acknowledge ourselves for hearing this much Holy Spirit. I'm going to do a quick recap before we go out into the lab because it's waiting. Oh. It, isn't that great to know it's waiting? <laughs> and, don't, and, and don't forget, it's neutral. The Course in Miracles teaches that everything in the world is neutral. Everything is in, in the world is neutral, but we're the one that's giving it to me. So we're the one that's making it anything other than neutral. So thank you for sharing with me. I will receive exactly what I'm asking for. <laughs> I always do. I always receive exactly what I'm asking for. Those of you online, if you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation, you can go to my website, earlpurdy.com, and you can do that. And I'm also available for one-on-one -on -one sessions called Clarity Sessions, where I use the teachings of the Way of Mastery, Course in Miracles, and my knowledge of astrology and numerology for those who are open to it. I want to thank you online, those of you who've been in contact with me, sharing with me, uh, it's been wonderful and beautiful and I also want to thank those of you who are in here doing that uh, I'm also going to start very soon uh, live streaming the classes which is very easy to do so so it, so we'll actually get to the point where if weather the weather is a problem then you can still we still do the class but I'll just be doing it from wherever I am the jam party. Yeah, right. And, and the yes. what now? Jam party. All right. That's right. I have I have one class playing while I'm in the shower. Yeah. Right. Not a body. That's right. Yeah, pay right. for that. It's gonna call the shower. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Oh yeah, okay, that's the one that's paper. <laughs> That's, that's the paper. 1995. <laughs> that's pretty ambitious. <laughs> Thank you, Doug. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. It's going to have to be an admin. <laughs> oh, oh. That's a lie. But <laughs> 
<laughs> I, lo I love y'all. I love the renegades. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, so we're going to start doing that also. And like I said, we're gonna, we got that app. And, uh, and there's going to be some uh, some new classes that I'm going to do also that are going to be what I call hardcore classes. Ooh, where we, right. for those who are, who want to get really, really deep in the material because they're also studying it on their own. And so they want to really go into it. So so there are going to be different levels that I want to do this on. And so, so we can continue to grow together. Because... Uh, I don't know if you realize it or not. Some of you all can feel it, but there's a celestial speed up going on. Mm -hmm. It really is. Mm -hmm. And some, it's funny how some people don't even see it or feel it. But there, but there are a lot of us that we, we really feel it happening right now. Mm -hmm. you know. And it seems like things are dividing up into two camps mm -hmm. within our mind. Mm -hmm. Those who are taking everything that's happening yeah. and they're using it to motivate themselves to want to wake up mm -hmm. and join and connect and love mm -hmm. and those who are taking the things that are going on and they're trying to use it to go back into more fear and more separation. That's also going on in my mind too because it's all my mind, right? So I got to see the part of my mind that wants to separate is a call for love, a call for God, and a call for healing. And then the part of me that wants to do it, I rejoice and I invest in that part of me. So, so the way you let go of the ego fearful part is you simply don't invest in it anymore. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of investment that was given us the challenge. So, um, uh, any it, one thing, or well, one thing you heard tonight that you would like to remember is anybody would just take a few minutes to to share uh, to give yourself an opportunity to really remember it by bringing it back out of you. And it's okay to put it in your own words. Change is learning. Change is learning. Mm -hmm. that's, that's how I know. Right. That's simple, but so powerful. Aaron. That, uh, that uh, when we see others suffering, we know that they're on, in their own particular curriculum for awakening. That's right. So it's no reason. Mm -hmm. So we actually supposed to take, now you might not want to do it in their face, but you're supposed <laughs> to take the same kind of attitude about their suffering too, mm -hmm. which is look at it with innocence and wonder. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's, wow, that's very interesting. You know, it, toward them just as much, whatever I'm doing toward my stuff, I'm supposed to do toward your stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm not supposed to like go, oh, I'm looking at my stuff with wonder and joy, and then look at your stuff and go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's easier to look at your stuff with wonder and joy, because mm -hmm. I'm not as attached to it as you are, you know. Okay, thank you, somebody else, one thing you heard. Yeah. We're here to create as the creator creates. We're here to create as the creator creates, which means we're here to give and receive love. I'm here to extend love. I'm not the source of it. Right? I'm the conduit. You know? And and, and it's time for us to come do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was good. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> Take a minute to know that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Cheryl. That's right. See, 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 instead of going, you know, for most people, instead of going, you know, when they go to the to the default setting, right, they usually go to the your fault setting. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what you want to watch, falling into the your fault setting. You want to let that one go, you know. Uh, that's And so when you, how do you know when you're there? By how you feel. feel. Mm -hmm. That's the right use of feeling. You can tell where you're coming from by how you feel. Now, your feelings might not reflect the truth, mm. but they do reflect the truth of how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's and that's a that's a, an important yeah. distinction. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why I don't argue with people about what they say they feel. You know, mm -hmm. I mean that's your experience. How can I cannot argue with that, right? But it doesn't mean it's based on fact. Mm -hmm. right. But it does get you in touch with what you're telling yourself. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm really upset, I go, Purdy, you are not seeing anything correctly today. Mm -hmm. You don't need to make any decisions today. Why? Because you don't feel good. You feel upset. You feel depressed. You feel scared. That means you have totally distorted perception and you're not seeing anything that's happening to you accurately. Mm -hmm. So just breathe. Try not to make any decisions until you feel more peace. Mm -hmm. And since most decisions on life and death decisions, 
I can afford to wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So remember that. Mm -hmm. When you think you got to me, is it a life or death decision? <laughs> no. Uh, but are you feeling like crap? Yes. Well, then that means you're probably not seeing any of this accurately. And then all of a sudden I realized mm -hmm. I've never seen you. Because I've never looked out through eyes that were 100% free of fear on every level. I've never had that experience yet. So I know I haven't seen you yet. So as beautiful as you are, through the lens of my fear, I can imagine how beautiful you would look when I'm fearless. The chorus say I'll cry. That you look so beautiful to me that I'll just have tears running down my face. And I have had that experience. Haven't you had that experience? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, where you were looking at somebody and you all, you all were so seeing each other so accurately in that moment that, you know, you just had tears come down your, mm -hmm. your face. That's, that's such a wonderful feeling. And so we're going to have more and more of that. So anybody else? Yes, my brother. Cultivate awareness. Practice it so it becomes as automatic as a fear-based reaction to an event. Mm -hmm. mm. 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 I love it. I love it when y'all talk dirty. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you. Yeah. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. Yes, my darling. Instead of feeling guilty about ending another relationship, <laughs> to just look at it innocently and, oh, I did that again. I All did right? it. That's right. I did it again. <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and how can I see that differently? And, you know, what was it I needed to learn from that? But because once I get whatever the lesson is, I don't have to keep having the circumstance show up anymore. Mm -hmm. and, and now we know what the lesson is. Mm -hmm. What is it? I'm doing it to myself. Mm -hmm. I'm innocent. I'm creating it. And I can make mm -hmm. another choice. Nobody's to blame. That's the lesson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the lesson. Anyone else? Be interested rather than interesting. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm interested instead that, of trying yeah. to be interested. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's and a good. And if they don't ask a question about you in the time that you're together, walk away. Yeah, that's a. You, well, they already showing you. They already supposed to be showing you their best side, and they already showing you they're self absorbed. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. think it's gonna get better? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been with someone and you just meet, this is a friendship, it doesn't have necessarily to be about having a special relationship. And you walk away and they say that they had the best time with you and they had the best conversation they've ever had and you go, but you don't know my name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't asked me anything about me. I had a date a couple of years ago and after he talked and talked and talked for like 30 minutes about himself, there was a pause and I didn't even try to talk at this point and he said, so, what else can I tell you about me? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Oh, that's wonderful. I love it. Let me just pause here. Can you come up with anything? <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> I can tell you about me. Oh, that's great. That's wonderful. All right. Okay. Anybody else? It's been a total pleasure. I got one little song I want us to go out into the lab on. So let's just take a breath and let's hear it one more time. Thank you so much. Thank you.